Chetana ham bikave kamam vadami. Kamma is committed, willed through thought, word, and deed. And of course, it's the law of moral causation and is the most fundamental doctrine of Buddhism. And actually, if I may ask you, have you ever thought as to why we have inequalities among people in the society? And especially, when you consider the people in the society, there are so many differences. And especially, some people are very much rich, whereas some are born with poverty. Have you ever thought what is the reason behind this? And whereas, on the other hand, a person will be born with very good talents, sometimes in mathematics, sometimes in science, and a person may become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, whereas another can be born with defects, such as being blind, or being deaf, or with some other abnormalities. So what is this? What is the reason behind this? And why is a person being born blessed to the society, whereas another person is not? So today we are going to discuss about the law of cause and effect, and what karma is, and what vipaka is. And I would like to warmly welcome Professor Oliver Benayaka and Dr. Harish Chandra for our discussion today. A very good evening to you, sir. And starting off, we the vision today. First of all, I would like to pose this question to you, sir. What is karma, if I may ask you? I think that's a yes, very uh, good I beginning if I we can start off. What you pick and work. Uh, the Pali word for, for karma is karma. Mm -hmm. Karma is uh, translated into Sanskrit as karma, and to signal is it's also as karma. The English term is action. In understanding the Buddhist teaching of uh, karma, I think there are three words that we should pay our uh, attention to. There are three words. One is karma, the other is karma pata, the third one is karma vipaka. Mm -hmm. When these three terms come to get together, the Buddhist conception of karma arises. The word kamma does not indicate either kamma pata or kamma vipaka. As you said, kamma is uh, what we think. It is ketana. You said at the very beginning, kamma is ketana. Ketana hamikave kamma vada. Now, uh, this ketana, I think, uh, is put into effect in the process of uh, uh, kama pata and the results of kama pata is called kama vipaka. These are the three terms that are connected to kama. If I may tell you something about this ketanaham bhikkhavi kama madami, there is another sentence, the second second sentence of this is ketaitva kama karoti kayana vachaya manasa. So the, in the first tense, the sentence, kama is separated from uh, what we do. Kamma is what we think, the, the, the thoughts that arise within us. Now, uh, how does a thought become a kamma? This chetana is translated as volition. Kamma is a volitional action. Volitional action. Now, uh, I have uh, various actions that I can perform at this particular moment. I can read, I can talk to you, I can see various other things, I can talk to Dr. Harish Chandra. Thousands of actions are in front of me. Mm -hmm. Out of these thousands of actions, I select one at a moment. Now I have selected to talk about this particular topic. Now it has become a calm. That is why it is it has effects, it becomes a karma pattern, mm -hmm. and it has results. Because of this selective nature of the action that we do, mm -hmm. karma becomes karma pattern, karma vipassana. 
That, that is why the Buddha has added the second sentence. He says that we do, we put our thought into action through uh, words, the body, mind. To understand what Buddhist karma, I think, uh, Buddhima, you will have to put these three concepts together. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Professor. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to ask this question, sir. Now, um, we uh, listened to uh, Professor's discussion on what karma is. Now, karma is the action, and uh, it is always accompanied, as, as an object is accompanied by the shadow. Karma is always accompanied by vipaka. So what is this vipaka in the context of Buddhism, if I may ask uh, Dr. Harish Chandra? Yeah, yeah. Now, even Newton has said that action and about action and action. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, here, the, the Buddhism is based on this cause and effect. So, if there is a cause, there is an effect. That mm -hmm. effect in this context, it, it is what he called vipaka. Mm -hmm. So, now, uh, he quite rightly mentioned about karma and karma patha. And vipaka, vipaka follows this. Uh, now, karma patha means Many of the conditions uh, must be satisfied for it to uh, uh, have the vipaka. Okay. Karma alone is not enough. Okay. Now, the karma patha means, uh, uh, you know, for example, about the panatipata, that uh, precept. Right? Now, uh, this becomes, uh, I mean, the, uh, the usual example given the hunter shoots at uh, deer. The deer uh, gets injured and he runs away. Mm -hmm. Now there is no panatipata. The karma is there, but the real karma patha which, uh, which goes into vipaka uh, follows if there are certain conditions satisfied. Now, as far as the first precept is concerned, is that uh, there should be a living being. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, he should know that it is living, then the chetana must be there, the intention must be there, then there must be a way of doing it, he has to plan that, and then uh, with that uh, the animal dies. Mm -hmm. Now th that karma, but that can lead to... Now this karma and uh, this karma path and vipaka, uh, this is not something invented by the Buddha. Some people think that because it is given in Buddhism and the Buddha has uh, preached, um, it must be uh, there. No, it's not that. This is the law of nature. Mm -hmm. The Buddha, with his own effort, mm -hmm. discovered that this is so. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been discovered. The Buddha means the person who discovers all this. It is there in nature. Now, if I if I uh, take one of these books and drops, the book will fall. Yeah. Now, for that, uh, that is a law of nature, right? The Newton just went into that and found out various rules about it. Like that, the Buddha has discovered that there is thing, is cause and effect. And uh, because of that, we are aware that certain things can lead to certain effects. So that is how uh, we have to... Uh, look at this. This uh, uh, is a powerful force, and we have to understand that. And uh, the Buddha, now your earlier question was why some people are this, uh, the other people are that, mm -hmm. like that. So actually, uh, the uh, this uh, the concept about this karma is, is so difficult to understand, so deep mm -hmm. that we may say that only a Buddha. Only a Samma, Sam, Samma Sambuddha can really dive into the depths of this theory. Mm -hmm. Even the, uh, the Agrashavakas like Saryut, uh, Saryut or Mughalan, they can go to a certain depth, but they can't go to the real depth. Only a Buddha can do it. And it is so complicated that you now he has simplified. It's like a person diving. Uh, and um, taking video photographs and coming and showing us to the people who don't know about the depths of the sea. So uh, actually he had done it. There are many sutras which, uh, uh, which uh, describe this theory. One of the best is 
Chulakam of Ibanga Sutta, actually, what you ask, the young man should have asked the Buddha. Because he found out through the Buddha that his father, uh, Kodeya, the Brahmin Kodeya, after his death, had been born at uh, the pup in his own uh, house. So, because of that, he got a little panicky. Um, hearing that this, uh, his father uh, was born as this pup. And then uh, the question that he asked were answered by the Buddha in this very famous sutta, but there are other suttas, the Buddha and Maha Kamma Vibhanga. And he gave this theory of how it uh, becomes effective and uh, uh, actually it is very good to know this in our day-to-day -day life because even if we are ignorant, the karma takes its own course. So, you need not be a Buddhist. Every person uh, undergoes this. If you do a bad karma, a bad uh, vipaka follows. Now, uh, people may wonder why. Why, should it be, uh, why shouldn't it be otherwise? Exactly. Now, actually, uh, as a psychiatrist, I see every day people who ask these questions when they are in a crisis situation, uh, they come out with this uh, and they want the psychiatrist to reassure them and explain and somehow comfort them. For that, we as psychiatrists must find out. For example, I'll give you two examples, true examples. Number one was a certain father, mm -hmm. uh, when the LTTE uh, came to their street and shot everybody in that street, mm -hmm. he was hiding behind a cupboard. Mm -hmm. He saw four of his uh, daughters and their husbands and the baby in the uh, being shot at, being shot at. And once the, the, uh, that uh, terrorist left, he started beating his own chest and actually as a result of that, a rib broke mm -hmm. and that was how we came across this patient. And uh, now he, he asked me, why? Why did this happen to my children? So I have to answer this question. The other example is not from Sri Lanka. A non-Buddhist British woman had to uh, had a very nasty experience. She saw her baby son. He was just uh, trying to walk across a busy street when a double-decker bus came and ran over the head. Mm -hmm. She said that the, it, it became a pulp in a few seconds and she had to see that she had to now she said i am a, i am a very ardent christian i am praying why did it happen to me whereas my neighbor who doesn't go to church she's quite all right with the children now now things like this have to be explained therefore we have to go into this this is a practical problem for me to explain so there are I, i'll just mention the rationalists uh, will, will say that it happens i mean if a double decker bus goes over a book mm -hmm. the book gets crushed so yeah. also a head uh, but then that, that father will not be uh, satisfied with that uh, the, the mother will not be satisfied with that explanation mm -hmm. he will say why did it happen to my child, not to another person mm -hmm. your same question then uh, if if I give, th that is the rationalist's way of thinking, mm -hmm. then uh, a person who believes in God will say it's God's will. That is how the mother will say, why did it happen to my, my children if I am very, uh, very, very faithful to God? Mm -hmm. So there is a third explanation. This explanation is what we are discussing today. Exactly, sir. And uh, that actually uh, Lord Buddha has explained the law of cause and effect in three different levels in uh, the highest teachings of the Lord Buddha. That is, uh, first he explains it in the Four Noble Truths, the Chatuarya Satcha, and Paticca Samuppada, that is the law of dependent origination, and finally in Pattani as well, uh, that is uh, the law of casual relation. So, um, actually, sir, if I may ask you, what is the cause of this karma that Lord Buddha has explained? Uh, before I answer your question, uh, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, the, the religions in the 6th century BC were divided into two as uh, Kiriyavada and Akiriyavada. The religions which accepted the uh, efficacy of karma 
and religions which did not accept the efficacy of calm. So, not only Buddhism, but also there were various other religions who were Griyavada, who accepted the theory of calm. For example, uh, Gantanath Putta, the founder of the founder, the 24th uh, preacher of Jainism, accepted Kiriyavada. In fact, Buddha had some sort of praise towards uh, Jaina Mahavira because he accepted Kiriyavada. Uh, what uh, separates Buddhism from other Kiriyavadas, other religions who accepted the theory of karma, is very uh, interesting. Buddhist theory of karma has three aspects. That is, Kamavada, Kiriyavada, and Viryavada. In the discourses of the Anguttara Nikaya, this is beautifully explained. When these three aspects come uh, together, the Buddhist theory of Kamma comes into effect. Kamavada is the acceptance of the actions that can be divided as uh, Kusala and Akusala. Papa and Puja. That is mere acceptance of the nature of uh, action. That is Kamavada. Kiriyavada is the acceptance of the results of those actions. That is Kiriyavada. These two aspects are found in some of the religions in the 6th century BC in India. These two aspects. The last one was not available, available in any of the religions in India. That is Kiriyavada. What Viryavada says is that Kamma is a selective action carried out by the uh, individual. He has the capacity, ability to select the action that he should perform. There was no external agent. There was no external uh, force. There was everlasting entity. The individual himself selects the action that he should perform because he is independent. He is independent according to Buddhism. When these three come together, Buddhist karma uh, comes into effect. That is one point. The second point that I should tell is that now in the later work, this is I am going to tell some about something what you have said. In the later works it is said that there are conditions to be fulfilled for a particular action. Dr. Sarichandra mentioned that when an action becomes Svanathipatha, only when, when certain conditions are fulfilled. In the later works, it is said that there are five conditions to be fulfilled for an action to become Svanathipatha. I would like to tell the audience, those who listen to us, that this teaching is not found in the Pali Canon. None of the discourses say that these conditions should be fulfilled for a particular action to become so and so. It is not said. This is said in the Pali commentaries and in, in later work. In fact, this had become a controversy among the Buddhist schools. Uh, as you know, there is a Buddhist school called Sarvastivada tradition. Sarvastivada came forward and said, no, there are no five conditions for the first term. Four conditions are enough. Therefore, we should, uh, I think, clearly know what early Buddhism says about uh, 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 karma. And the second part that I would add to your question is, karma is uh, a fundamental teaching of Buddhism. As you said, it is uh, uh, an aspect discussed in the Parishamutpad under Sankara, Japacha Sankara, the word Sankara, uh, takes come into uh, if, uh, consideration. That is why karma is uh, described as Vachi Sankara, uh, Kaya Sankara and Mano Sankara. Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara and Mano Sankara. Sankara is another term for uh, karma. And as you said, uh, in the Patthana, uh, let me tell you this with uh, offer. This Patiti Samuppada is not uh, discussed in the Patthana. 
Patana discusses 24 conditional relations, relations, as you know, 24 conditional relations. But Samapada is not one of them. Mm -hmm. But these 24 conditional relations are based on the theory of Patana. Therefore, the Patana does not discuss this uh, avijja, uh, avijja uh, gives rise to Sankara. There is no discussion of this sort in Patana. Patana takes Kama as a different Pacha, mm -hmm. conditional relation. One of the 24 Pachayas in the Patana is Kama Pacha. Hetu Pacha, Adipati Pacha, there are 24 Pachayas. One of the 24 is Kama Pacha. What it means is to understand the uh, relation that we have uh, among ourselves as being and the relations that exist in the outside society, in the organic and non-organic uh, species, uh, we, these 24 relations have to be understood. The, one of them that dictates relations is karma according to uh, Pata. The third point, uh, Doctor, I would like to tell is that uh, the knowledge of karma is uh, taken as a super knowledge. As you know, the Buddha became, he said this, I am going to repeat it in a different way. The Buddha said that uh, he became a Buddha by understanding three special knowledges. One is Ubenyuasa, Sipachaku, the third one is Aswaka. One becomes an Arahant also through these three knowledges. Buddha became uh, Buddha, Prince Siddhartha became Buddha through these three knowledges. An ordinary person becomes an Arahant also through these three knowledges. He should have Ubenyuasa, you know what it is, heterocognitive knowledge, then Dibachaku Kayava, and then the Asavakya, that is the knowledge of the destruction of defining impulses. Mm -hmm. Without having these three knowledges, if we, if, we, if one follows the path of Panjavi Mukti, one cannot become an Arahant. So, to our discussion, the second is very important, that is Dibba Chakku. The Dibba Chakku knowledge is explained in the discourses as the seeing how people are uh, dying and reborn according to the karma uh, that they have done. Chavamani, Upajamani, Sati, Pajanat. That's how the Dibachaku knowledge is explained. So, I think uh, there is no Buddhism if there is no rebirth. Exactly. There, is, uh, there, there is no rebirth if there is no karma. Mm -hmm. So, one of the pillars on which Buddhism stands is its theory of karma. It is the most important because I, we know that there are certain Buddhists who would say, I am a good Buddhist, but I don't accept that there is a rebirth. I will come to end at the, uh, no. at the death. There are Buddhists there who are would say so. Say Those are, they, they cannot be Buddhist mm -hmm. because according to Buddhism, to become a Buddhist, one should accept the karma and its effect and accordingly the man is reborn again. That is what is said in the Samaditi. Mm -hmm. And the Samaditi Buddha has explained this very well. Exactly, sir. Now, I think we discussed as to what karma is, what vipaka is, and what are the causes of karma when taking uh, it um, according to the law of uh, cause and effect, uh, as Lord Buddha has taught us. And if I may ask you, Doctor, uh, what, when is the requirement or the need as a psychiatrist um, for the law of uh, karma and effect to take place? First, I must say that one must be aware of these things, whether you are Certainly, a psychiatrist yes. or you are, you are any other person. But in my practice, it is, uh, I come across people who are really in trouble and uh, who are feeling guilty. And because of that, they develop various psychiatric problems. Before that, may I uh, uh, ask you, sir, the, about this one which is uh, given only in the new texts. I always had this, uh, maybe a vichikicca, 
about the matter, even in that example which I quoted, uh, a hunter say, shoots an arrow and the fellow gets, uh, I mean, he gets injured and he goes away. Uh, how should be, how should the hunter be aware of the fact that the animal died or not? This was always a little uh, problem for me to understand. Is there anything about this uh, fifth condition which should not, which does not have to be satisfied uh, out of the five? Even the first one is mentioned. So in that case, how do we know whether even we the first four are not mentioned in the discourses? These five are mentioned in the Atta and in the Visuddhimag also. The, this is a uh, matter for controversy among the Buddhist schools. They have their own theories regarding this. Now in the other precepts, of course, there are no five conditions, but there are sometimes three, sometimes four. Yes. Uh, now, like, according yeah. to the uh, discourses, Dr. Alexander, even if you harm in any form to a living being, it, it becomes Pranathipa. Yeah, even I think, I think yeah, in, the, in the later text, these conditions are added to get the permission to perform this uh, uh, immoral acts. Exactly. The Pali canon does not say so. It's good. The, about uh, uh, your question. Now, for example, uh, when a person is in crisis, there must be a way of our reassuring. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, take this uh, case of a person coming with guilt. Now, okay. Sigmund Freud has gone, I mean, he lived he, uh, only in being, but not re-being. Now, actually, the word reincarnation and rebirth are not, um, not the proper words. Re-being is what is advocated. So now, Sigmund Freud uh, went into the being, but not into re-being. Mm -hmm. So his uh, discussions are based only uh, between uh, birth or reconception and then death. Mm -hmm. Buddhism goes uh, so many steps ahead of that. Now, uh, even he said that there are certain actions which are followed by certain effects. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll give you two examples from what I can remember. Now, one, uh, actually it was a bride, on the wedding day, in the presence of all the relatives, when she discovered some uh, something uh, in the husband, I should not mention what exactly it was, this, uh, she started scolding him with obscenities in the presence of everybody. He went into a real severe embarrassed uh, condition. Uh, condition. And the marriage ended there soon after the registration. Now, now she, a few weeks later, she became severely mute completely, what we called um, aphonia, couldn't utter a word. Now, another, the second example is a schoolboy who kicked the mother. He became paralyzed. Now, some doctors said that it was a sprain or a fracture, but all these things were excluded. Well, he was paralyzed for several months. Now, uh, uh, this was what Freud said, uh, guilt. Now, guilt causes certain psychiatric problems. The earlier uh, word was hysteria. Now, we don't uh, use that word because his, his term means the uterus, the womb. No longer does anybody believe that uh, only women became hysteria. Uh, affected like this. So now what he called conversion state is uh, when you do something there is an action. Now there are very interesting parallelisms between uh, what Freud said to explain this action and reaction in one birth, uh, one birth, one being and what Buddhism is happening from uh, bhava to bhava. Mm -hmm. Now, n number one is, it takes time. Now, after the kick, a few weeks later only, the paralysis uh, started. Yeah. Now, Sajju uh, Kirangva uh, Muchati, this milk, this, the liquid becomes solid, mm -hmm. curd, after some time. So this is uh, uh, an interesting parallelism. The other parallelism is, the, the boy who kicked, uh, became paralyzed and it was the same leg. Right. So uh, Sigmund Freud said that the mind, the unconscious mind, 
takes a small hint from the action and causes the reaction in the almost in the same organ. Uh, I can quote hundred examples of this. And what is what is uh, in literature called the poetic justice is like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, this is uh, an unconscious uh, mechanism which even uh, novelists, they even without knowing about it, they come out with this. Uh, now, for example, in this, uh, in this film, Bahubharya, a very interesting thing I noted was a man does all his evil things from inside a lorry. Mm -hmm. His death is when he goes running and knocks against uh, an oncoming lorry. So uh, these things, uh, the the film director may not have uh, uh, known about this, mm -hmm. but this comes from his unconscious shell. Uh, so uh, there is another parallelism. Now, uh, uh, now if you read Kama Pilotika Padane, there are about eleven uh, uh, states suffered by the Buddha. Mm -hmm. There is again a controversy about this whether the Buddha uh, has this Kama Vipaka, but it is there in Kama Pilotika. And there is a similarity between the action and the reaction coming through various births. Now, Sigmund Freud mentioned one birth, the Buddha uh, has uh, gone through the entire uh, sansara. Okay. And uh, now for example, he, um, he broke the spine, mm -hmm. uh, caused a fracture of a vertebra in an opponent in a wrestling uh, in a very unfair way. Mm -hmm. Now, he suffered a backache even when he was preaching as the Buddha. Now, th that is another similarity between what Freud has shown, uh, what is happening in psychiatry. We come across this uh, almost every day. And the, the, other, the, the other thing is, this, uh, what Freud said this, when you do something, the guilt uh, produces the result, there is absolutely no intervening uh, person. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to postulate the theory of a god to say that a person who is guilty suffers. So also, if you extend that through various bhavas, the, the vipakas are not produced by any external voice. You yourself. Now, the other thing is the severity. Mm -hmm. Freud has mentioned that uh, he has shown, and we also see uh, in our practice, you do a small wrong thing, mm -hmm and you suffer immensely, completely, uh, uh, I mean, it is very unfair sometimes you feel. Now, for example, the boy who kicks the mother, he, it is evil, of course, but then for him to suffer for months, he can't walk to school, he can't play football. Now, uh, uh, shows that you may do one small, Papa uh, Kamma and the Vipaka is immense. Now, there is a very interesting um, verse in Lower the Sangarava, Sanganak Ek Eludanaka Isasinda, Siolanga Valanda Ginidal Nire Dukminda, Aya Anga Loma Ganane Iskapumlada. Now, see, I mean, uh, a, uh, a judge in the modern context will not give a sentence like that. So also, so the, because the unconscious mind is very strict, what, super, what uh, Freud called the superego. Here, our uh, concept of karma is uh, having all these qualities. That these are the things which have to be explained to patients when they come. So because of that, uh, it is very uh, interesting to know that these things are happening because what the Buddha said, we see it in our everyday practice. Exactly, sir. Can, can there I is one, one thing more I have to add before you <laughs> say anything. I am not comparing psychiatry and uh, Buddhism because psychiatry is a very limited thing okay. with a very limited scope for a practical thing like physics or chemistry. Buddhism is, an, uh, uh, I mean, it, it is such an immense uh, lot of knowledge, so there is no comparison. But in my practice, when we see these things, we consider uh, that. Uh, well, the, the theories of karma can be accepted. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell yes, something please. about what doctor said? Now, uh, as we know, uh, karma is one of the five subjects that we don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. This karma is here is one of the five subjects. You know what it is, five. One of them is karma. The Buddha says we can't understand what karma is. And doctor said uh, at the very beginning only a Buddha can understand it perfectly. Now, 
the I think the Dr. Harishchandra's uh, uh, explanation is basically based on uh, medicine and psychology. As far as I can see, what the Buddha has said about karma is a little bit different from that. that is because I, I have that, simplified it for yeah, people. That, that is because now uh, in the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, he mentioned about the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, the, in, it is said in the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, if you harm others, you will be short-lived. And if you tell lies, uh, uh, in the next birth, you will have a mouth full of uh, uh, smell. Uh, like that, there is a parallel between the action and the reaction according to the Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta. But uh, this is not how the karma comes into effect according to Buddhism because Buddha has said in one of the discourses, uh, a Brahmin went to uh, him and told him that as far as he could see, all those who do bad things will go to heaven. Buddha said, no, it can't be. There are so many people who had done bad things who are born in the uh, hells. So that is because Karma comes into effect in a in an own way. You can't say that if you kick a person, your leg would become paralyzed in this life itself or in the uh, next birth. This, this this theory has entered Buddhism uh, after some time. It is called Kama Sarikatavada. There is this term. It is not Kama Vada. It is Kama Sarikatavada. Explaining the Pali commentaries and the sub commentaries is not the Kama that is explained in the Pali canon. It is the Kama Sarikatavada which came into existence at later time. This Kama Sarikatavada doctor says that a result is uh, uh, manifested uh, very clearly in relation to the action that you have done. For example, if I give, this is what is given in the text, mm -hmm. I am not uh, concocting. If you give a coconut to a man in the next birth, you will have 500 acres of coconut. So the karma is explained in this way in the later uh, words. But the Buddha says, except nobody could say how it comes into effect because it is so vast, so deep, so comprehensive, nobody knows how it comes into effect. How would I, you explain Kama Piloti Kapadana? Uh, uh, as you the said, it, there is a uh, controversy. controversy regarding yes. this because this is, when you examine, this is uh, found in the Apadana Pali of mm -hmm. the uh, Uddhaka Nikaya. Now, when you analyze the structure of the text, it is quite obvious that it is a later edition. Because the first is Buddha Padana, then comes the Pacheka Buddha Padana, then comes the Thera Padana. Among the Thera Padana, this Bubba Kamala Pilotika Padana is found, which is the description of the Kama that Buddha had committed earlier time. Now, Kama is uh, getting results according to the Vasana that we. Uh, still have, still have. Buddha is described as the person who has destroyed vasana fully. Therefore, as far as early Buddhism is concerned, there is no possibility for to uh, uh, suffer any any, any karma that he did. Uh, vasana guna kisiva kut nati. nati. Vasana guna kisiva kut nati. Therefore, as, yeah, but one, when one becomes uh, an arahant, he is described as a person who has destroyed all kamas, kamakaya, kamakaya. But naguna are there. Yeah, kamakaya is the term that is given to explain who the arahant is. So kama is now fully, fully destroyed, fully ah, destroyed. This bubba kama pilotika doctor is not uh, found in the early discourses. This is something added by the monk when this later theory, that is, the theory of Kama Sarikata came into existence. Exactly. Now with that actually, uh, now Lord Buddha has explained Kama according to the time of operation. 
in different methods. That is, Pittadama Vedaniya Kamma, Aparapariya Vedaniya Kamma, Ahosi Kamma, and all that. So, if I may ask you, according to the time of operation, how can we differentiate the Kamma and Vipaka? The, this is uh, the, the, this is the, this question. I think uh, is well known, and answer is also well known. As you said, Buddhima, uh, uh, there are various categories of kam. Uh, those main, there are there are three main categories uh, with regard to the time how kam is described, with regard to the function how kam is described. With regard to the if priority, priority how, how come is uh, categorized? There are these three uh, teachings of come. I think you, you asked about the time factor, how time is uh, becomes valid as far as come is concerned. You mentioned the there are four uh, uh, variations. One is Dhitta Dhamma Vedaniya, the kamas that will give uh, results in this very life to Dhamma Vedaniya. Then there are Kammas which give results in the next birth. That is called Upapajya Vedaniya. And there are Kammas which would give results at any time in birth. That is called Aparapariya Vedaniya. Yes. Now, the f if a Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya Kamma does not give results in this life, it will become uh, defunct, I would say. Oh, that oh, 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 oh. Oh. If uh, Upapajya Vedaniya Kama does not give results in the next birth, it becomes Ahosikam. But Aparapa, as far as Aparapariya Kama is concerned, there is no Ahosikam because it can give results at any time in the long history of Sansara. That is, therefore, Ahosikam is valid only for the Dita Dhamma Vedaniya Kama and the Upapajya Vedaniya Kama. Now, uh, even though the kamma is uh, divided so on the basis of time, uh, the, the kamma comes into effect in a way that we can, cannot explain. Now, take the example of Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya. Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya kamma can give results on the next month, on the next day, very next nice. week, in oh. this very life. Therefore, Ditta Dhamma is the meaning of the word Ditta Dhamma is that the results can be seen very shortly. In, in That is what it is. This is how the Kama is divided into four as on the basis of time. That is what your question was. No? Exactly. Uh, so, if I may ask you, Doctor, so what are the kind of explanations? that we can give when it comes to the situation when pa uh, uh, patients uh, suffer from this kind of problems and crisis in their day-to-day -day lives? No, they don't want any explanations like that. They want treatment. But what I say is I have to reassure them and some knowledge is uh, uh, obviously essential. And uh, you know this cause and effect is there in every religion. Actually speaking, in every religion there is a re being although you don't call it rebing. If you are living here and next birth you go to hell or heaven, that is a rebing. So because of that in every religion, people understand that when you do good things, good things follow. When you do bad things, bad things follow. Now, uh, uh, about this matter, matter about Aparapari Vedani Karma, you say that uh, it does not become a hosi. Can't it? I mean, thing is once you now there is another way of classifying this. Now, now for example, uh, upagataka. Now, certain things can be extinct as a result of another come. Now, there is another way of classifying uh, this uh, uh, this uh, karma. Uh, that is functional Fu uh, functional uh, classification of karma. Yes. Uh, it, now, it, it has nothing to do with the uh, classification of time. Time. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Time. So uh, the, now, for example, certain kammas can be nullified, may be enhanced, may, that is what is called uh, upastamba. Then the other upapiraka means it can be uh, reduced and upaghataka, I thought, is when it can be uh, made to be extinct. Correct. So all these come 
uh, in different ways you can uh, explain this. In my practice, uh, usually the, the second way according to the, uh, now there is a classification called uh, Garuka Kam, which is uh, an absolutely essential uh, uh, result that follows certain Kam, etc. Then the Asana Kam, then Achinna Kam and Katatta. Now, I, I pay more importance to, uh, than all those things to Achinna Kam because this determines or actually uh, it depends on the way we do things every day in our everyday life. So, uh, unless you have done Garuka Kam, which is a very rare thing, then if there is no asana kamma, the next is achinna kamma. What we see is at the moment of death. Now, I am talking practical terms. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your knowledge is tremendous and some, uh, some of the things that you have told now uh, have shaken me a little about especially the way the karma uh, comes into being in that parallel way which I always uh, uh, thought of. Now, uh, the, uh, this achinna karma, uh, that is, uh, they are now when we see certain cases of what we call delirium, mm -hmm. it's a, or, or what you call uh, an organic psychiatric illness, like organic psychosis. Mm -hmm. Where now, for example, a person uh, who uh, abstains from alcohol, if he is a real drunkard, then he stops for a few days in the hospital. Uh, they behave a certain way, mm -hmm. and sometimes in physical illnesses. Again, this delirium sets in. At the moment of delirium, they regress. They go back to their day-to-day -day experiences. You can actually sometimes recognize their job by watching this fellow. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, a fisherman, when he is lying in bed with the delirium, he'll be doing this. Catching fish. A teacher will start uh, using the piece of chalk or lecturing, things like that. So what uh, what is uh, the, the, what we have to understand is at the moment mm -hmm. of death there is a condition just like delirium mm -hmm. uh, because at that time the heart is very feeble, beating very slowly, in very uh, in a very weak way, and the blood supply does not go to the brain uh, and uh, you know, in the proper way. So he gets into a delirium. And at that time, the sense organs may not be getting enough blood. So what you do at the last moment, at the moment of death, offering an atapirikara or listening to it, may not be effective because he may not be hearing the period. Mm -hmm. He may not be feeling that he going giving these arms to the priest at the last moment. So anybody who is uh, who is doing all the wrong things, papa kammas. At, until the moment of death, if he does something meritorious at that time, it may not be effective because the mind goes back and he regresses to earlier states. Therefore, whatever he has been doing will, will act as the Achinna Karma. That is why you have to be very careful about the moment of uh, uh, death and the way of being careful is not to do any papa kamma during your normal day-to-day -day, uh, life. This is the practical side of it. So when we advise people, uh, we have to uh, think about these things and advise. Some of the people, they, they always do this, no, they are all, uh, now for example, an alcoholic. I mean, he goes on drinking whatever, uh, we say whatever the uh, uh, Swami Nahan says, say, yeah. uh, he goes on drinking. So it is good to give some insight into this. And uh, adding to that, uh, doctor, if I may ask, uh, now, uh, when it comes to mental symptoms, how can a person really differentiate between this karma and vipak and how can a person realize no, what it is? No, is what he is doing. Yeah. Now, for example, karma, the act of drinking, yeah. gambling, uh, or raping a girl, um, I mentioned the word because these days, uh, if it is not <laughs> women who <laughs> get raped, <laughs> old women and girls. Mm. Uh, we, that is the action. Mm -hmm. So, Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya follows. But then all these things go into uh, some sort of a record which goes on from power to power. Mm -hmm. It cannot be erased except when this uh, uh, that process sets. What I want to 
you will optimize that this classification on the basis of priority mm -hmm. has nothing to do with how the comma com uh, functions in our life now mm -hmm. because what it decides is the uh, next birth so if, if, if you do a cargo comma how it immediately comes when you uh, uh, die so your next birth would be decided by Coding. that uh, comma so these four commas are the factors that would decide the next birth. When you are born, they are invalid. They, are, they have nothing to do with the uh, life that you have gone in. At, at the moment of death, these four come into effect and what would decide to give the uh, next birth. Mm -hmm. In that sense, these four commas, Garuka Kama, mm -hmm. Uh, Achinna Kama, uh -huh. Asana Kama, and Kadatta Kama are explained. Explained. Yeah. And uh, actually we are almost reaching the last part of our discussion and I would like to uh, put forward three different conditions. Uh, so if I may ask you, uh, now if there was a blind person and a blind person goes in a forest walking in the forest and if by mistake he tramples uh, a beetle and the beetle dies, or another condition if we can take uh, a person who is actually with poverty, almost dying with poverty, goes and gets a loaf of bread to uh, feed his or her uh, starving child. And another condition, sir, um, uh, where a person uh, who is actually forced, let's take a servant who is working under a master, is actually forced to kill a fowl. This is uh, due to the request of the master. So these are three different conditions that actually can be in the society, sir. In short, if you can give an answer, sir, what is the, how can the law of karma it, uh, and uh, first, uh, effect be applied yeah, to it? Yeah, uh, first is not a karma because mm -hmm. he doesn't have any thought of uh, killing, uh, killing that person. Or therefore, he does not perform a karma. There is no doubt about that. Chakupala. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good, good example. Mm -hmm. Now, the second one, uh, he uh, steals because he is poor. Uh, he poverty, child. poverty, is not uh, not taken into con consideration in the Buddhist analysis of karma. Mm -hmm. Whether you are rich or poor, you can't steal. Mm -hmm. You cannot things that are not given. Mm -hmm. So he performs a karma fully. Mm -hmm. When we come to the third, uh, uh, what is your third one? Uh, it killing is a fowl, yeah, killing, killing a fowl by, yeah. by the fowl, request of the master. Yes, it, it comes to the uh, scope of Panatipata, the very first precept. Mm -hmm. The Buddha says this, uh, these precepts are beautifully explained in the Dhammika Sutta of the Sutta Nipata. Mm -hmm. Dhammika Sutta, uh, it is said that there are three conditions for the uh, first precept. Mm -hmm. That is, you can kill yourself, uh, it, still Panatipata. You can kill someone or harm someone on the request of others, still it is Panadipata. And there are killings in the society. You know that uh, cattle are killed, mm -hmm. huh? there are uh, even human beings are killed. Mm -hmm. If you do not agitate against this killing in the society, still you perform Panadipata. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, is, that is how it is according to the Dhammaka uh, Sutta. There are three prongs. Uh, strategy, strategy to be adopted to refrain from Panatipata according to the Dhammika Sutta of the Exactly. Uh, finally, I would like to put forward this question to uh, Dr. Harish Chandra. Now, uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Doctor, uh, the, the whole world itself is um, it's, it's a mixture of different people. Some people are rich, some are poor, some are healthy, whereas some are sick. So that is, uh, how can uh, you give an explanation according to Buddhism to this aspect uh, of these differences of and the un in inequality that is found uh, in the whole society? Very simple. Because the thing is, now you are assuming that being rich is better than being poor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get so many examples where the, the richer person is uh, much less happy. Mm -hmm. Also, being very rich, there is a condition now. Um, uh, the extremely rich people, mm -hmm. say in the Middle East, sometimes with these oil kings, uh, uh, 
they have an illness mm -hmm. due to having uh, that is what you call wealth fatigue syndrome. Mm -hmm. Wealth fatigue syndrome is an illness when they are, you are very rich. So money doesn't mean anything. The, the young man, Sumedha, gave away everything that his, all his ancestors had earned and kept uh, in the treasury. Uh, he became very happy. Mm -hmm. King Siddhartha had uh, so many riches, three palaces, everybody was uh, th there for him to have a very enjoyable life. Mm -hmm. uh, but still he gave, gave up all these things and went alone to find uh, the real happiness. So being uh, rich and being happy are, I think, two different uh, wave bands. Right? You can be rich and happy, uh, but you know, for example, richness is being happiness and duty paraman dhanam. So that is that. But of course, uh, the Buddha never said don't be rich. There are so many sutras there. Now, for example, in Anana Sutra, that Anamaja Sutra is the happiness you get by knowing that you have earned all these things in a very fair way without causing anybody harm. Uh, so. Uh, the, the differences can be explained according to this uh, concept of karma. But you have to understand that karma is just 20% of the niyama dhammas. Karma niyama is just one of them. Dhamma niyama, daitu niyama, uh, bija niyama, things like that are there. Chitta niyama. So karma is not responsible for all the things that happen. But what I uh, would like other people to know is that some, pe some people have this mis. I don't believe that a person who is uh, uh, leading a very good life mm -hmm. sometimes comes to a, a very sad state mm -hmm. and vice versa. Now, we have to understand that just like uh, future births, there were previous births. One of the commas, uh, I think that is what is behind this uh, Upaghataka, a, a past kamma can suddenly make all these riches disappear. Mm -hmm. So also a very poor man can suddenly become, uh, become, uh, 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 become uh, yeah, a millionaire. A millionaire. Uh, now, uh, as he mentioned about this, uh, what you uh, mentioned about the foul, there are three things you can't kill, you can't get somebody to kill, you can't encourage killing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, another very important thing people don't know. Uh, without mentioning names, I may say that there are about 10-15 uh, uh, organizations in Colombo and, uh, now for example, 30,000 fowls are getting killed every day, I think. Mm -hmm. I have not counted, but this is what the employ uh, employees come and say. 30,000 fowls are being killed every day. And the, the, uh, the people who do that I think mainly are Buddhist young ladies. Mm -hmm. They don't know this. Whether they know or not is immaterial because the, it is an, at an unconscious level that these forces work. You may not know that you are stealing, right? So uh, once this, uh, 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 this Panajbata, uh, that one can be broken in three different ways. Mm -hmm. So also the other things like uh, say alcohol. You may drink, you may give another person a drink, especially at weddings, arms giving, spirit mm -hmm. ceremonies, they do that without knowing that it's uh, a papa gamma. Or exactly. you may encourage it. Exactly. Actually, we have come almost to the end of our discussion and uh, this is actually a very vast topic which we cannot actually discuss from one now. But uh, would like to give a message to all our viewers, as sir mentioned, Happiness cannot be bought from money. That is another point that we need to stress on because people go for materialistic attainment these days rather than spiritual gain. Man. So we need to consider now every every single action that we do is a result of the chetana or volition. So if we can perform our actions with a good thought, with a good action, and if we can do perform the deeds with a good word, if we can speak good words and if we can think before we speak, that is very much important, I think. And that is how we can actually cultivate wholesome deeds and wholesome thoughts and we can reach the ultimate supreme bliss, which is nirvana. So we have uh, actually discussed a lot about karma and vipaka in our discussion today and would like to remind you all one more thing. 
uh, that is you can give us um, uh, emails and you can send us uh, your queries and you can contact us on beyond the vision dot tv at gmail.com that is the email address that is open for you all to give us your questions and we will definitely discuss them in our future discussions as well and would like to thank uh, professor oliver benayaka and dr harish chandra for joining us in our discussion today a very good very thank you to um, you all sir and uh, we will see you next week with another discussion which we hope to discuss um, next week so may the noble triple gem bless you all Sama Sambu, the Saranai.